What's up guys? So what you're looking at right now is a depressing picture of many months wasted and uh, I had to tear out that entire shower system that I've been working on since January. So I decided uh, to make this video um, I've referenced it, I believe I referenced it in a few videos along the way about um, uh, the tile ready system that I was using. I will apologize for this video if it gets away from me and gets, uh, gets kind of long, but I want to want to share kind of the, 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 the journey through the decision to use the tile ready system. What I expected from it what I thought I was going to get um, and uh, what ultimately I went through the issues and why I would not recommend this system uh, going forward. This picture was taken uh, um, several weeks ago um, and now this video that you're looking at is what it currently looks like and as you see there, it is a uh, Curdy a Schluter system. A, uh, so, and again, this video, I, I might jump around. It's just how, how I am. So, uh, again, I apologize for that. Try to stick with me here. If you have any questions, definitely just put them down below. If you don't want to listen to this whole thing or watch this whole video. <coughs> it's, gonna, it's not going to be a super exciting video because... I was documenting video after video of all my steps and uh, when it got to the point where I had actually the last video that I had uploaded for my sh for this whole uh, renovation the shower renovation was the flooring and getting ready to change out the grout on the floor the shower I had already had the base put in at that point whatever I, again I kind of jumped around a little bit um, but I just kind of had to do what what I could what made sense for the time time that I had available versus getting plumbers in here and all that stuff after getting the grout all taken care of on the flooring uh, we went with something darker and uh, and it worked out fine it looks good I recorded a few more videos of the shower uh, progress when it got to the point where I knew I couldn't continue um, with it and had to figure something out that's when I stopped uploading the videos uh, I've done some other stuff I've uploaded a few videos I believe um, I think they're the, the garage outlet and um, whatever I've been out of town we had to go um, out of town was, uh, renovated my mother's uh, other bathroom this visit uh, which I'll have that one uploaded here at some point too but um, anyway let me back up to to the beginning and this what where this journey began we are in the middle we're in the middle of renovating the entire condo here that's been a whole other issue that's been ongoing now for over a year however we we got to the point where we we're finally ready to start on the master bathroom now we're we're lucky enough here in this condo it's a two-story that it has two and a half baths our master bath uh, the subject of this video is uh, it's downstairs with our our uh, master bedroom and then we have another I guess a second master bathroom you'd call it upstairs so we were able to use that the entire time anyway January rolled around and we were able to jump into uh, uh, this bathroom I had been researching methods and it had been a long time since I actually did any bathroom renovations on my own. But in my search for uh, the best route, I came across the Tile Ready system. I don't recall uh, ever doing anything with them before uh, on any other job from many years ago or helping out any buddies along the way here and there I 
I don't recall ever using the Tile Ready system, but it really sounds awesome. It looks awesome online. The concept of Tile Ready is uh, that it's already prefabbed to many sizes, and you can actually even have it custom sized for you. It's exactly what it's called. It's it's ready for tile. You get that sucker installed and use uh, the adhesive that they. Uh, it's it's a modified thin set. It comes with if you purchase the kit. It comes part of that package, or you can buy it separately. It's a little pricey. Uh, I've never purchased that from a another store or anything, so I don't know what the cost comparison was. It just came with the kit that we went with that we chose. We uh, once we had gotten the 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 measurements and the layout of our bathroom all determined, uh, I was really dead set on having a a bench in the shower. Uh, Kathy, uh, my my better half, she she really didn't care about that. She actually uh, initially was wanting a much larger shower, like the back wall uh, going from side to side, which would have made it almost an eight foot shower and uh, we could have made that work but in all reality by doing that we we then we lose some space it's already a small bathroom it's not even quite an eight by eight bathroom I was able to uh, twist her arm and get her to go down to a five foot shower that had a bench in there so that's what we chose so we I uh, watched whatever videos I could come that I could find on Tile Ready, uh, read different blogs and everything, and uh, I wish I would have read more than I watched videos. And what I mean by that is, you go on YouTube and search for Tile Ready, and it pops up some videos, but you really don't find anything. Uh, um, well, it depends. Let me take that back. You find some things that may be helpful for a particular, your particular uh, setup. Mine being five foot with the bench being one foot of that, we now would need their 48 inch base with the 12 inch bench. Uh, there was there nothing on that. The other thing was that uh, finding anything showing the installation on a slab uh, or lower level. This, this condo is built on a slab, no basement or anything. The videos that you come across are almost all wooden subfloors and or done within their particular factory in a perfect setting. They use a smaller footprint. One guy has a three by three uh, shower pan and puts it into this prefabbed uh, um, enclosure that was just built with perfectly plumb studs and everything is just perfect. You get to the plumbing underneath, no problem. That's not what we ran into, unfortunately. I didn't think that through enough. Uh, again, after the fact, when I started running into problems, that's when I dug deeper into the actual blogs and it was like a slap in the face. I should have read all that stuff prior. You should really do your research. This is my my fault. Because what I started seeing then was not, I don't want to say overwhelmingly negative, but it was like reading a review at the local pizza shop where if you read 30 reviews, you get a, of an overall vibe if that place is worth eating at or not. You're always going to have, you're always going to have some people that are like, nope, this sucks. Uh, I threw up afterwards, uh, never go there again, whatever. But after the, after some, you just really get a vibe. So, but, so after reading so many, um, testimonials or, uh, or these, these forums, people asking questions or it running into issues, the overall vibe that you get is this is not a, a, a fantastic system to use, especially if you're a DIYer. Now, somebody that is a, a professional contractor that works on you know, specifically, say, showers or bathrooms in general and has been doing this stuff for years and has had their hands on many different uh, systems, maybe things would have went much smoother, but not for me. Anyway, we, uh, 
ordered a system. Again, it was like $850 for the size that we needed. And it came with the base in its own box, the bench in its own box, the mortar or the uh, modified thin set, I mean. Uh, it, it came and then the, it also came with a flashing kit. Uh, that's in one of my earlier videos, one of the first few videos of starting this bathroom, I believe. You see the actual boxes that it came in. Um, here's a picture I found online of some boxes that it comes in. It, it, it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> it's a box that says tile ready and uh, the system's in there. Opening the system, opening this up initially, I didn't really know what to expect other than what I saw in the pictures and the pictures online, like no one really showed up close and personal of, of these uh, systems. The one thing that I noticed that was different was the coloration. If you go online uh, to their website, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, pans are black or look like a charcoal color anyway. And mine look like a you know, greenish hue of some sort. And it just didn't, it didn't really seem like really great detail. And what I mean by that is it had a lot of rough edges. It just looked, it was, it's a molding. They're just a, a single unit. It's a single piece molded uh, together with this uh, waterproof, mold proof or mold resistant. I believe it's mold proof, they say. Um, don't quote me on that. Either way, uh, it just comes as one one unit but again it didn't look like a real real crisp unit again i was excited for the system the time and headache that i thought it was going to save so i didn't pay too much mind to that so what you have to do is the uh area that it's going to be in has to be perfectly level um that should be pretty obvious the plumbing has to be lined up perfectly. Uh, again, that should be pretty obvious. With the plumbing, you get one shot, basically. So be very, very uh, anal about the location of that plumbing drain. Don't give yourself any play at all. It's it, You've got one shot at it. I, I'm not going to go into a lot of the headaches that we got that I ran into from the time of opening the package and bring it into the bathroom up until the point where I could actually get it installed because I ran into plumber issues. And again, I believe I mentioned that in some of the uh, earlier videos. Contractors are, are man, they're, it's hard to find a good contractor. You can find some, some cool dudes. You can find some nice guys. Uh, you can find some really good salesmen. But to actually find someone that can do the work and do a good job, man, that's a whole different story. First plumber messed up, put the stuff in the wrong location. The plumbing was was measured, both the both my toilet and the uh, waistline for uh, or the drain for the uh, shower. The second guy I had come in who has done a lot of work for me, but not plumbing. He's claimed and, and claimed that he could do it and whatever, but he's more of a concrete guy or, um, you know, support beams type of guy, or he can do some roofing or insulation or stuff like that. But when it came to plumbing, I, I, I paid him and, uh, that didn't work out perfectly. So anyway, fast forward to finally getting a plumber in there that got everything installed correctly and ready to go for this tile ready system. Now it's time to install that tile ready pan. You have to, the instructions that come with this thing, awful, just absolutely awful. And uh, you can go online. I did notice uh, browsing through their, their site. You can, you can go to specific shower systems and download or view the uh, instructions. TileReady.com, go check that out and giggle to yourself a little bit. It's really not uh, helpful at all. You basically have to measure. It has ridges uh, on it. And um, this picture here, you can see what I'm talking about. So these ridges go from like maybe a half inch at the uh, drain to, I believe it was 
shoot, I want to say two and two and a half inches or three inches. I think two and a half inches to the deepest, um, the deepest part towards the uh, back of the shower pan. And the instructions say to measure the deepest part and then subtract a half inch for your mortar bed. So we mixed up the uh, mortar, laid it down uh, at the two and a, whatever it ended up being exactly. It's been now, <laughs> that was, I think that was three months ago now <laughs> that, that we did that part. So I, I kind of forget the measurements. But anyway, whatever it is, the half inch less, we put that entire mortar bed down. It, it di didn't seem right to me because the, the ridges are sh more or shallower as they go forward. So it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. But maybe I just misunderstood. I don't know. It just seemed weird. The contractor and, and I, th that's what we did. We put that bed down there. And we pl put the uh, glue on the PVC drain. And we put that sucker down in there. And it just it wouldn't it wouldn't set flush. We could not get it flush. It was like rock like a rocking chair almost. Not extreme, but very noticeable. We were messing with that for I want to say 15 to 20 minutes, and we decided to pull the system back up and abandon that day. So we cleaned up, we scraped up all that that uh, that mortar that we had put down before it got too hard. I cleaned off the bottom of that pan and I just told him that, let me figure something out. I'll call you when we can reschedule. What happened is, and, uh, and uh, here in some of the, these pictures, uh, kind of hard to demonstrate because I used pictures and uh, not video, but tried to uh, best show what, uh, what I was talking about. The ridges, actually like the four or five middle ridges of the system were about a quarter inch thicker or longer, I guess, um, upside down, I guess, higher than the others. Even even trying to f lay this down on a flat surface, it had a little rocking to it. Now, we dry fitted this thing. That's how we were able to get the uh, plumbing lined up and uh, and all that. And I, it had some uh, some movement, but... Again, that's something that didn't jump out at me. I figure, okay, you're gonna have a mortar bed here. This, this, that'll solve all the problems and no big deal. No, nope, that was not the uh, the issue. That even that the quarter inch, because when you set that down, having that thick mortar bed there, you need to get the uh, sides of your your shower pan. You need you need it to set flush on the concrete. You can't just have it floating up in the air, of course. And you couldn't, you couldn't do that with these ridges. Uh, I called customer service at Tile Running. And Tile, it's interesting there. I, it's like, a, it must be a super, super small company. They've been around for a long time. I think 15 years, 20 years, something. I mean, they've been around a long time. But I think there's only like five or six people that work in this place. Because you call, it's the same lady that'll answer anytime you call. She's not super friendly and i explained the issue that i was having after a few days a few calls and finally called back i can't remember the guy's name i want to say mike might have been like the head installer or engineer or something there now he was he was a really good dude i had read uh, in some of those uh some of those forums where customer service was awful and and they'll never do it again. They have no refunds, no nothing. So I kind of went in with uh, low expectations of what I was dealing with. And then after dealing with the secretary and her having a, a somewhat bad day, I, I was not expecting a great conversation, but I was wrong. I explained what happened and I told him, I, he said, well, you can ship it back to us and we'll ship you a new one. The time frame on it, he couldn't actually give me an exact time frame. Because this is all going on during the whole, uh, you know, the the whole um, virus deal, so I they had no idea. Shipping was just a mess, and um, you know, understandably. And I'm like, well, I've already been on the shower. 
a couple months, I really want to uh, finish this. Can I just, because the material, it's a soft material that this, this uh, thing's made out of. Uh, you can use a razor blade and, and shave it down. So that's what I posed uh, or proposed. Can I just shave off this quarter inch extra to get it to set flush? If I remember correctly, he told me he'd call me back. I don't think he put me on hold. Either way, he spoke to uh, one of the installers or something like that. And he got back to me saying that as long as I did not cut too much away and destroy the integrity of the uh, unit, then that would be fine. Now, here's where I was really impressed. Not only did he offer initially that I could ship it back as is and they'd ship me a new one. He told me that if I shaved that down and it still didn't set perfectly, that I could still send it back to him and they would still give me a, uh, another unit. That, to me, was really cool. Now, that I'm a skeptic most of the time. <laughs> That's just who I am. And maybe he was doing that for the reason of uh, maybe because of the whole virus thing going on, maybe business was super slow, and he didn't want to lose an $850 sale. Because I assume the, the profit's got to be pretty dang good on these things. Uh, I could be wrong, but if you saw this molding, it, you, just, you know they have just machines that, or, or uh, molds that, that this material just pours into it, and they've got them already prefabbed. I mean, I can't imagine the cost being absorbent. If they got a big old warehouse, they keep all these different sizes just stacked up. Even if they need to keep that many, maybe the molding is 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 quick, and dries within a day or two or something. Throw it on your uh, your company truck and ship it or FedEx it or whatever, uh, which whatever method they use. You you charge eight hundred fifty dollars. I can't imagine, or I can imagine that the profit's pretty decent on that. So maybe, again, because of the timing of everything going on, maybe he didn't want to lose a sale, so he was being a little extra uh, courteous. Either way, I don't want to take anything away from him. Dude was super cool, uh, so I have to give them a, a thumbs up for that. So anyway, I, I shaved those ridges off the bottom, and it now sat perfectly flush and level on the floor. One of the other things I did ask him was about the mortar bed. And he, again, my, my entire conversation or conversations with this guy uh, were, were great. Uh, were, were great. And again, I wish I could remember his name. It's been a few months ago now. I know I wrote it down at the time. I, I What I do, because I'm so so damn scatterbrained, is I'll, I'll just find a piece of paper uh, or, or ripped envelope or whatever sitting near me, and I'll write information down on it and I'll set it off to the side and it will get tossed in the garbage by uh, one of us or it gets buried and uh, in paperwork and I find it months later and say oh yeah that Mike was his name or no it was Dave or whatever there aren't many people working there so if you for some reason watch this video and still decide to get a tile ready system uh, and you do have to call them uh, whatever the dude's name was, he was, he was a good dude. So anyway, I called the contractor and said, Hey, Oh, oh anyway, sorry. I got off my, uh, ADD, I guess if you want to call it that, I have no idea. I asked him about the, the mortar bed and he did say that he, the instructions for that weren't super clear. And he explained that you do measure like it says, however, you taper it um, up to, I don't know if in the picture you can see like where the drain is on uh, from underneath uh, the uh, pan here. There's like a line there. And he said, you you taper down from the, your mortar bed goes from like the two and a half or whatever it is and taper it till you get up to the front where then now it's just a half inch from that point forward. Uh, so... Got the contract back, contractor back. We uh, got the, the mortar bed down. We got this thing in. And my, my walls are not perfectly plumb. But they weren't so terrible that I was going to have uh, huge gaps or have to put some furring strips or anything. They were, they were close enough. So I, we got this in here. We got the uh, level on it. 
Um, I had this this box here. You can see in this picture, it's actually a, a package that uh, Kathy was uh, shipping to her family. And uh, sucker was just like it's like a hundred pounds. Maybe maybe it was more. It was packed, super heavy. I sat that on there and then um, also ran some screws into the studs to hold the uh, uh, the pan down. And uh, they said to give it you know two to three days. And at that point, I was just you know, excited that we finally got it down. Moving forward, a few days go by, and I get in there, and some of it had run out. Uh, when you push it down, obviously, you're going to have excess. It runs out outside. Try to clean all that up as best you can while it's wet. I missed some spots. I had to, you know, get the old uh, chisel out and hammer and uh, clean up around the edges and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. So that was done. Now it comes to building the bench. The bench comes in this shape right here, and this picture is just stock uh, on, offline, uh, off uh, their website. I think so. I got this off their website. Anyway, this is what it looks like. Uh, mine was, again, not this black color. It was uh, uh, this greenish hue, as, as you can see in the video. But um, the instructions for this, more than awful. <laughs> and the... the the construction of this bench, it, it, the whole concept of this was just, I, I just don't really understand how they consider this uh, user friendly. Maybe I'm missing something along the way, but you have to build your own framing for it, um, which is not a big deal. As you can uh, you know, see here, it, it's basic framing. The, the the trick, though, to this is you want to get, a, obviously, an accurate measurement to make sure this thing sets level. Well, the front lip on this bench, uh, the whole front of it is like an eighth of an inch. And uh, maybe more than that. Maybe it was maybe a quarter. It's the same width as the edging of the back of that shower. And there's there's no way to set it on there. There's no nothing to hold it in place so you can get a good measurement or anything. Like you're trying to hold that thing on there and make sure it's level and then have your tape measure measuring to the base of that pan. Now the measurements tell you like, oh, it's, it's this or whatever. But again... That's in a perfect world. These molds aren't perfect. And I did, was not going to trust just what the what a piece of paper said as far as like, oh, measure it exactly at uh, 14 inches. Uh, what if it's 14 and a quarter? What if it's 13 and three quarters? Now I've got a quarter inch off on this, this bench. And, uh, you know, what am I going to be doing at that point? Uh, shimming it or, or whatnot, like built this entire bench and now I've, I've got to shim it. Or again, I think that the bench itself, it, it's really not made to be, it's not easy to figure out the exact height of it because there's no way to have it rest in position and be lined up flush with the, the end of the shower pan itself. So that was, that was an awkward uh, uh, scenario. Anyway, we, I, I got the bench built. Got it in there and uh, had it setting in place. Then comes the the flashing issue. I'll try to demonstrate here in some of these pictures the issue that I ran into. I'm assuming their flashing kits must all be the exact same lengths because they sent two long pieces that were I think five feet and then two that were I think 13 inches. I'm trying to think now of exactly with my shower system being in the corner like that i just needed the front the right side and then these things aren't custom fit for these sizes and i think that should be part of the kit like if you order whatever kit size you have it doesn't matter the flashing kit that comes with it should be custom fit to that particular pan and or bench. I had to cut them. I had to modify. They're, it's super thin. You just take some 10 steps 
but it still leaves a little rough edge. I, I just didn't like that. I thought that was that was kind of like the lazy way out of it. I know production wise, there's there's so many different showers. They do off, offer custom showers, but again, if you're uh, if you really want to stand out as a fully customizable DIYer system, then I think that extra step should be taken. Cut the flashings to length. Screw them in using the, uh, uh, I just used some hardy backer screws, they're waterproofed and whatever. Screw those into the, to the studs. The issue you then run into, and this was odd, is when you put your, your uh, wall on, over top of the lip of this flashing system, the bottom of the flashing itself, the, the bottom lip of it, it flares out. So, and it actually does that before you even put the wall because the, I went with the go board system, which is a uh, super, super lightweight, like styrofoam type material. Um, my first time using it, I, I liked it and sadly I had to tear it out. Uh, but anyway, uh, so it wasn't even, the, that wasn't even the, re the reason it was too lightweight. Now that you have all this flashing flaring out at the bottom, I thought, Okay, well, it's super thin. Maybe it's just made that way so that once you tile over it, it'll hold it down and no big deal. Well, no, nope, that's not the case. So when I did get to the tiling over that, it would not, the, there, even though it was a thin metal material on this flashing, it still had enough strength that it was causing the tile to pop back off. That was super, super, super frustrating. Thankfully, I didn't do a whole a whole bunch um, and then come back a few hours later and see that my tiles had popped back off and that would have been a big mess. I recognized it very quickly after two or three pieces. And what I had to do is clean that off. Now that I've already, I've already got my wall over top of it, through to the studs, I can't remove this flashing and just go with a waterproofing a silicone or something like that. But anyway, so now I had to take some tin snips and cut that that skirting off all, all of all of it. Uh, if you're familiar with using tin snips, they're they it's not like a, a real nice smooth clean cut that gets nice and flush to the to the edge and no the damn thing's cut at angles and what a mess that took a while to get all that cut off that drove me insane there's another issue with with uh, this product that I, I think just the quality of that um, it's not it's just, I'm not a fan of it not a fan of that so I want to do the shower pan floor first we went with what they call their waterfall drain system. They offer standard drain layouts, middle, rights, lefts, just like any other shower. With my shower uh, drain location, looking back, I guess I could have went with anyone since we moved the damn thing three times uh, and tore up the whole floor basically to, to do it. But anyway, I digress. We went with their waterfall system. They offer a similar system where it's like a, uh, um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but if you go on their website, you'll see like it's a, a, a trench. That's what it's called, the Ready Trench. It looked pretty cool. The way it's designed, it's this long rectangle-shaped covering the, with the drain in the center underneath of it. You tile right over it and looked cool. And I was like, okay, I like that. So when I called to order this system to begin with, because I didn't go through Home Depot or Lowe's or any of those that, that sell the systems. I actually went straight through Tile Ready and I didn't even do it online. I looked online, but I called them directly because I had a couple questions and wanted to make sure I was getting what I wanted. And when I was speaking to the, uh, the uh, person originally with the order, I had mentioned that system. I said, yeah, it's like, it's like a trench system. She said, oh yeah, that's the uh, Ready Trench system. We have the waterfall system, and I was like, oh, I was like, what's that? And I think I had, at the time, had seen it because I was looking through their website, and I, I, I believe I had seen the waterfall system, but didn't differentiate them too much because they looked the same to me. So she just told me, she's like, oh, no, it's really cool. It's up near 
the front of the front wall and it's completely hidden so that the water when it comes down the wall or what um, the water drains down to it disappears down into the into the abyss you don't even really see it like it's almost like a drainless floor so needless to say i chose that and now fast forward to the installation the uh, difference with the Wonderfall system is that you tile over top of it. And, and I think I misspoke a few minutes ago about the trench system. I, I think I said we tile over that one too. No, no, you don't tile actually over the trench system. The trench is a, you can pull that grate out and, and access the drain. This system, however, that's the way I thought it was supposed to be. Again, I was confusing it with the trench system. That wasn't the case. You have to tile over top of this Wonderfall system. And I'm using, or was using, a mosaic tile. The smaller mosaics that we were using, they were definitely not what you need for this particular system. The Wonderfall system is designed to have larger tile format, cover your, your floor, and leave just that space behind the trench open so that the water that comes down the wall, the, uh, wall can flow right down into that uh, opening and of course the the uh, shower water itself on the floor can drain down into there I didn't like that at all once I realized what the what the hell I had done uh, ordering this thing it it was pretty much it was it was too late to, to turn back at this point I didn't want to have a drain system that I couldn't get to you tile over if I was using large for format tile, for instance, it would you'd have to break your tile up to get down in there. I think part of the allure and the logic behind the design itself was to prevent any clogs or anything to be get, to get down in there. They're just uh, which I understand and thought. Hey, that's a, that, that's a, a great idea. However, again, anything that could get down in there and perhaps clog that drain, I, I didn't want to risk that because obviously now you tear your you have to tear your tile up. And these 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 are um, in this base material, you can't just take the tile up and replace it. Maybe you can. I would be amazed to ever find a video where somebody had tile installed and dried on this this shower system and they were able to remove it and put new down and have no issues. Uh, and I say that now with proof, as far as I'm concerned, after the, I tore it out. But I felt that way initially during the install. So what I did was I installed the tile around it and then I installed it. The grate itself sits down below your tile. So once you put the tile on your, your shower pan, you're up higher than that grate by uh, a half or I'm sorry, a quarter inch or maybe even a, a little bit more, maybe even um, like a three eighths or something like that. So to make it, level and to look anywhere near decent I had to tile that separately now using the same mosaic format I played around with that a little bit and it just looked it looked a little goofy you you had the the mosaic because of the pattern and the way it, it laid out I couldn't have a full mosaic land there and on the other side as well or even a, a usable side and I didn't think far enough ahead to really nitpick and try to find the happy medium and say like okay well I can do maybe a half inch on this or half tile on this side and that'll leave me this half over here uh, either way it would not have looked good I definitely don't believe that it would look good. 
So we chatted, uh, Kathy and I, and went with the second mosaic tile that we were going to be using for the the niche and the accent row. Got that on there, laid it in, so now the pan's all tiled. The one wonderful system is tiled, and it looked it just looked ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So there's the issue I have with this wonderful system. If you're going to do large format tile uh, on your, if, when I say large for, format tile, I I think large format in my mind large format is at least a anything over a 12 by 12 tile maybe maybe you could do like a, even someone might say a 6 by 12 or something would be considered large format but in my, my in my mind anything over a 12 by 12 is large format so I think if you do anything like that or any kind of larger subway tile style and do it as the, you can see in pictures that are supposedly the, the wonderful system tiled I think it would turn out okay unfortunately my particular situation scenario that did not work there's an argument for this to say well how can you consider that a, a defect or a problem or a negative for the for this product if you just didn't do it right and I'll meet you in the middle on that one because of the fact that you won't have access to your actual drain after it's installed 